Hey guys, welcome to Bomb you Spirit episode three. We're going to be talking about the spiritual benefits of all of this social distancing circumstances. Now, before we get started, I just have to say this disclaimer because every time I talk about what's going on, there's always going to be, I know there's always going to be people who like want to comment on like how I'm not honoring the dead or whatever. Um, <laughs> guys, I do these videos to empower you. I don't do these videos to reiterate the obvious. Okay, sorry, I just don't. Uh, I think there's way more power and benefit into educating you into the positive stuff about what's going on and how you can use that to your benefit and progress. And if you can progress, you can probably help other people progress around you. So yes, obviously people are dying. I'm not here to talk about that. Let's actually focus on something that is going to help us, okay? Anyway, just had to say that disclaimer, moving forward. Okay, so the spiritual benefits of, <clears throat> excuse me, spiritual benefits of all the social distancing. There's actually a couple of things that are really cool that are going on for everybody spiritually. And then it also will translate into physical actually as well. Um, and how people are going to be going about their lives moving forward. So the biggest thing I've noticed about all the social distancing, for those of you who've been with me for a while, you guys know that I like my space. <laughs> I like my bubble. I like my little energy bubble. I don't like to be intruded upon energetically. I am very sensitive right? And people are often intruded upon in their energy field without even realizing it. People are going to be affected by this as people are no longer in each other's energy fields. And I'm going to be honest, that's actually been kind of an exciting thing for me to like realize, oh, I'm not going to have to try as hard <laughs> to get people to not like, you know, to get people to not intrude on me as much. And so people who are not used to that, they're going to be experiencing that, right? And what are the effects of that? Being in your own energy without anyone else's energy, fucking with it, intertwining it, fucking with you, right? So people who are really asleep, they're going to go through these really crazy epiphanies about themselves and how they really feel. They're going to realize they feel drastically different of not having to be in their hostile work environment anymore or not having to be around certain family members, even certain friends that they think are friends, but they're going to realize, are they really my friend? <laughs> are they really my friend? They kind of make me feel like this. I kind of feel really good after not having to be around them for so long, right? So that's gonna be one big bonus. People are going to come into some major truths about their emotions, what they feel, how they feel about people in their lives, and what their own energy actually feels like. As a baseline, without any interruption, what their own energy actually feels like. Some of you guys may even be experiencing that. It's a very glorious thing to kind of uh, come into. So there's also that. <clears throat> People are also going to have the space to kind of work on their shit and work on their wounding. And as I've talked about before in my new moon and full moon videos, that wounding was coming up around this time for the last week. Even the next, next week, we're still going to have a little bit of that, even though we're going to have some really fun, awesome, expansive teamwork energy coming in with Mars conjunct Saturn. So that's going to be fun. But anyway, so people are also having that space, physical and energetic space to not only feel what they feel, but work on the shit they haven't worked on, Right. A lot of people use other people sometimes as a distraction to not feel their shit, right? Or I'm just going to go to work because I don't want to feel my shit. I'm going to be a workaholic and, and work as many hours as possible because I don't want to feel my shit. People are forced to feel their shit. And that's leading to not only them healing, but we I mean, remember we're one consciousness, right? Unity consciousness. I've been talking about this a lot. Probably should do an episode on that. I keep saying that every time it comes up. Um, as one person works on their stuff and heals their stuff, Everyone that they touch energetically feels that. And we all touch each other energetically. Even if we do give each other that space, right? It's like healing is a domino effect for the collective. So we have all these people, you know, isolated, in hermit mode, whatever. Not only understanding what their energy feels like for the first time, just purely their energy, but also doing some massive healing, right? The collective will be catching up as far as their healing is concerned. There are people who are also choosing not to do that. There are people who are choosing to get stuck in fear and binging on the news and all of that craziness, right? So there are people who are going to resist that process and try to continue to distract themselves as much as possible, but there are people who aren't doing that. People who haven't done that before. And like I said before in my other videos, it's also leading to um, like a shake awake is what, I, is what I've been referring to it as. We were just going to be like, shake it awake right now. Um, <laughs> And there's a lot of people going through that. I, I, I you know, you got to make light of some of this stuff because sometimes that could be kind of traumatic waking up like that. Um, but it's beneficial for the collective so we can raise to a higher frequency. And I've talked about my dream space experience where I saw the possibility of like a split of a frequency timeline split. 
Um, I think it's still a possibility. Everything, you know, anything subject to change as we move forward, because um, we're in such a crazy time. But I do do also think there is the possibility where that doesn't have to happen, right? Depending on how many people can get to a certain frequency. So that's also uh, another benefit. Another cool benefit of all the social distancing, because people are no longer tainted. Well, some people still are, because you got people in your homes that you live with. Hi, Mister. Hold on, I got my cat Clyde. What's up? I guess he does. <laughs> okay, I'm blinking with you. <laughs> He's like, blink with me, blink with me. For those of you who are not like cat people, that's, oh, oh, come here. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, for those who are not cat people, total tangent, just because he came in on the video. Uh, that's actually like their way of communicating with humans, of like getting attention, acknowledging emotions, just saying. So every time your cat is like, like in your face, they want you to blink with them back to like have that rec rep reciprocity. Anyway, it's kind of interesting that that happened as we're talking about this, right? So another big benefit, as some people work on their stuff, as some people come into the understanding of more of who they really are, what they really feel, what they actually like, some people unfortunately are going through loss of jobs or going through sabbaticals or, you know, paid time off, whatever, like any circumstance in their jobs where they can't go to work anymore, right? Even people who work from home, <laughs> it's very different working from home than it is working in an office. When you're in an office, you're around all those people, first of all, you're around all those people, you're under the eye of your boss, and you got to like do your shit, and it just creates this environment of like hamster wheel, hamster wheel, hamster wheel. So when you're, <laughs> he's trying to rip open the bag of toys, sorry, love my cat. Um, and so hamster wheel, hamster wheel, hamster wheel, right? When you don't have that, you're still very much alone in your energy and subject to your own thoughts that are not subjected to the programming of the hamster wheel. Some people are realizing how much they really hate their jobs. People who have been stuck in the hamster wheel, people who have been like dead asleep in all of this. And as they're going through their wounding and as they're coming into understanding their own energy and as they're coming into understanding their own feelings, they're also understanding, shit, this isn't my passion. I don't like this work. I can change this, especially if they lose their job. It creates that space for them to like actually think about what they're truly, authentically, genuinely passionate about. And whatever it is we're really passionate about typically intertwines or leads to our mission for why we're incarnated here. So many more people, because of all the social distancing, are also, as a benefit, going to wake up to their actual mission. More and more people are going to do what they actually came here to do. Imagine, imagine what that would be like as an existence if the entire collective, the entire collective is not going to do this, but a lot more people are going to be doing this, right? But just hang in there with me. Imagine if the entire collective realized what their mission was in this incarnation and they got up and they just did it. If everyone did exactly what they came here to do, that's like a well-oiled machine working at full capacity, right? And also driving a lot of joy from that because our missions and our blueprints are our missions and blueprints and usually make us very happy. It's very satisfying because it's what we signed up to do, right? And a lot of what people want to do is actually going to benefit other people. There are not too many people in the world who just want to make other people rich, right? Not, not too many in the people world desire to do that for the rest of their lives. Many people want to create. That's really what the soul wants to do. The soul, oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, oh, hold on. <laughs> All right, there you go. I made a little stool for him over here so he can like sit with me while I do readings and work. Anyway, the soul really wants to create. So now we have the social distancing, again, creating the space for people to actually be alone in their energy for, some, for many people the very first time in their lives, alone with their own energy and their own thoughts healing anything that comes up from that because they're not having as many distractions. Some people will still try to distract themselves, but some people won't, right? And they're also going to be realizing what in their life is not authentic to them because they're realizing how, like, what about them isn't authentic and working through that shit, throwing that shit out and getting into their authentic energy. People will be more authentic. People will be cutting out people and things that are not authentic to them that really truly don't resonate with them that have been pure distractions in their life. The collective is going to be doing this. Many people in the collective will be doing this. And as a result, also, finally, following their mission and following their blueprints, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So those are some of the big benefits of social distancing that I've been really wanting to talk about. Because um, the, the social distancing is also playing a key role in some of these people waking up, right? Um, and especially as we heal and raise our frequencies, 
I mean, it's just think about that on a large scale level, on like a global level. Again, not everyone will. It's not going to be at 100 percent just because of free will. I'm just throwing a little buffer for my math, my mathematical statistics training, throwing a little bit of a buffer in there. Not everything's going to be 100 percent. Right. Um, but there's going to be more than there was before. And that's really positive. So just some positive shit to take out of this whole experience and something to think about with yourself and with your family um, and people that maybe you've even distanced yourself from and thinking about what they are going through now, okay? Something to look forward to. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Bomby Spirit. Uh, for those who are my patrons and who are watching, uh, keep your eyes out for the schedule for the live chat discussion about this episode over on Patreon, okay? I'll see you guys later and I hope you guys have a really great night and I hope you guys really take care in these very excited. These are exciting times. Like, I'm sorry. I'm just going to call it like it is. I think these are very exciting times. I know that there's a lot of, you know, lower frequency stuff wrapped around. I know there's a lot of like sadness and tragedy and a lot of fear because it's a lot of change. And I get it. It's happening in a very destructive way. It's a big fat global tower moment. I get it. I understand. I just don't see the point in not moving forward. Right? That's how you work with tower moments. That's how you work with change. I know it rubs people the wrong way when they watch my stuff on what I'm, I'm talking about, what's been going on. Um, if it rubs you the wrong way, rubs you the wrong way. But I am not that person who dwells on the bad shit. I'm just not that person. I look forward. Because <laughs> that's all you can do in life is just look forward, right? Anyway, guys, I love you. I do hope you guys are taking care of yourselves. And I'll see you soon. Namaste.